Okay, let's talk uh, a little bit about Alexander Zinchenko. Now, look, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, this is a player around whom there's been lots of debate for quite some time now. Is he, um, is he someone that we can trust and rely on defensively? The answer to that is no. We've all known that for a long, long time. I was talking about it with my mate last night, and we were saying that perhaps in eight to ten of the home games that we'll play over the course of the Premier League season, you can get away with playing Zinchenko. When we play sides who are going to be um, camped on the edge of their own box, sometimes with two banks of four, sometimes with banks of five, you often need the kind of player that Zinchenko is, someone who can unpick locks, someone who's passing, he's always progressive, someone who's technically really, really secure and someone who has that creativity and that vision to be able to help you break lines nice and early and get you into positions where you can uh, meet defenders 1v1 and create things. Okay, so Zinchenko has his benefits. I'm not writing Zinchenko off. Like, I'm not sitting here saying that Zinchenko is a liability and we need to get rid of him. But on the defensive side of things, when he comes up against the very, very best, it is clear to see that he is lacking. Now, there's no denying that. And there's no doubt about that. And it kind of annoys me the fact that we've got sort of like two camps with Zinchenko. You're either a staunch defender of Alexander Zinchenko who refuses to acknowledge that defensively he can let you down at times. Or you're a huge critic who only highlights the defensive problems that he has at times, but never, ever, ever speaks of the positives that he brings to the team. The truth, guys, is somewhere in the middle. The truth is somewhere in the middle. Now, I remember the game at Anfield last season. I commentated on that game for Arsenal TV. And I remember a really easy ball from Trent Alexander-Arnold dropped over the top of Alexander Zinchenko's head. Salah cut inside him really easily and rifled in at the near post. And that gave uh, Liverpool the equaliser in that game. And in the end, we weren't able to find a winner and it finished 1-1. I just think... Um, that against the very best attackers, he struggles. And when look, I think most defenders in the world struggle against Mo Salah when he's, when he's at it. So this isn't to say that Zinchenko is among the worst defenders in world football. Like, let's not go that far. But against Mo Salah, it is a mismatch. And we saw that again last night, in my opinion. But I'm very much in a place where with Zinchenko where it's just use him when you need to use him. Horses for courses, as the saying goes. If you play against a stubborn low block, Zinchenko could be your man. But when you play against sides with greater threat, particularly of the caliber of Liverpool, you need someone else. You need someone who's a little bit more defensively stable. And that's why Mikel Arteta has gone out, in my opinion, and signed first Urian Timber and then Ricardo Calafiori. Because in Calafiori, he sees someone who can protect our backline much better, much more effectively, but also can play a bit more. And therefore, we don't lose so much in our build-up when we go with that more defensive left-back option. That's always been my issue with Kivi or can he step into midfield and play? No, he can't. And we know that that's a big part of what Mikel Arteta wants his fullback to do. The same with Tommy Asu. Excellent 1v1 defender. I would argue that Tommy Asu, outside of Gabriel and Saliba, is our best 1v1 defender. Yet, Asking him to go into midfield and play means he's outside of his comfort zone and he doesn't perform um, anywhere near what we need him to. So Calafiori is the answer to this. I think that, you know, had Calafiori been available, um, had Tommy Asu been available, had Timber not been protected yesterday, then there's a chance that all three of them start ahead of Alexander Zinchenko. So don't obsess over this idea of Zinchenko being our starting left back because he isn't anymore. We saw that last season. What Zinchenko is, is an option. This is a preseason friendly. He was available. He was fit. He's been with the team um, for a lot longer than some of the other players that have returned from international duty and he played. But the debate will, will rage on. And every time he plays and we look a little bit defensively vulnerable, that conversation will come up, of course. But the bottom line is that we're at a place now with Zinchenko where there's no point in constantly pointing out the defensive deficiencies and the flaws. Instead, appreciate what he can do 
and what he does very, very well. Be mindful of what he struggles with and deploy him accordingly. That's the way you manage Alexander Zinchenko. I talked about it the other day. I think there's a lack of respect for Alexander Zinchenko and the way that he and Gabriel Jesus, when, um, you know, when they came into the Arsenal setup, really raised the bar and raised the level. So I don't want to go down this route of saying he's a write-off, he's finished, get rid of him, et cetera, et cetera. That is harsh for me. But we know what he is and we know what his flaws are. And and I think, you know, as long as Mikel Arteta manages that right and does adopt the horses for courses approach and only picks him in the games that, you know, we uh, we think we can get away with it and only, or, or for example, brings him on in games where we require what Zinchenko brings, that's fine with me. He can still be a very, very useful asset. 